this video is not top 10 places to go check out on Bev or any of that. This is just a video of my adventures that I had in Bev. So we started our adventure in the town of Bev. And I don't really like driving, but with views like these, driving just becomes a little bit better. Okay, so the very first thing that you do when you enter Banff National Park is you go to the park office and you get yourself your permit. And a permit is required to explore any of the national parks. So the first stop on our adventure was the Bow Falls viewpoint. And this is part of the Bow River, which if you have seen my Explore Calgary video, is the same Bow River that runs through Calgary. So it goes from the mountains, Banff, Canmore, and into Calgary as well. So this is the Bow Falls viewpoint and this location is perfect for someone who's looking to sightsee and not hike because parking is fairly close by and so you can just park, have a quick look and then move on to your next destination. But if you're the type of person who is looking to hike, there's many options to choose from. I personally chose to walk over to the Banff Pedestrian Bridge, which is around 15 to 20 minutes away from the Bow Falls viewpoint. And the hike is mainly on a flat dirt road, so it's a really easy hike. And if you do decide to check out the Banff Pedestrian Bridge, trust me, you won't be disappointed. Anywhere you look off of this bridge, you'll find unbelievable views of Banff National Park. And so after we were done checking out the whole Bow Falls viewpoint, the trail, the pedestrian bridge, uh, we decided to head over to the Caves and Basins historical site. This is the main building at the Cave and Basins National Historical Site and a little background on the site because it's really important to the town of Banff. So basically, in the 1800s, a couple of people found hot springs around this area which basically created events that created the first national park of Canada which is Banff.
Now I didn't have enough time to go inside and check out their hot springs or even take one of their guided tours but I did however go outside and check out the building from the outside and also check out the surrounding nature. So the National Park has done a really good job of making walkways around the building and into the nature so we can really get up and close with the nature and see all the sights. Now, I didn't get to explore the hot springs inside the building, but luckily we saw some hot springs outside the building. And let me just tell you, they did not smell good. Just imagine like you're sitting or standing in a dirty bathroom. That's how it smelled. I also saw some people creating some really cool indigenous artwork around this site. And another historical fact about the site is that Aboriginal people have been here for over 10,000 years. So it's really cool to see their culture and their artwork being represented around this historical site. After I was done checking out the building, I made a bad decision and I started walking down this random path. So we went down this pavement and not knowing where it was going, to be honest, uh, at first I didn't really look at the sign, I didn't stop to look at the sign, I glanced over it, I walked down and I was like, you know what, who cares, we're just going to be there for a little bit probably, we'll see something soon and walk back. I thought it was going to be a 10-15 minute walk, turns out to be like an hour and a half. We're just walking down uh, the pavement and the scene though, it was amazing. Uh, the nature around it, especially with no people around, uh, 10 out of 10, the water, the peaks around us, the trees. And what I mean by no people is that around five, all the buildings, including the historical site and the gift shop, they close. So with that, the tourists leave and you have all this nature to yourself. After walking for an hour and a half, meeting with the park rangers and having a bear scare, we finally made it to the Sundance Canyon. So the walk before the Sundance Canyon is fairly easy just because it's on a paved road which is mainly flat. But once you get to the Sundance Canyon, you do have to climb up a steep hill which is going to take around 5 minutes. But I definitely recommend you go all the way up for the full effect. And I just had to try out this water. It looks so clean and fresh. And I was right, it was some of the best water I've ever drank. After checking out the Sundance Canyon, it was getting a little late and my camera battery was about to die. So I just decided to put my camera away and enjoy the scenery. So, this is it for this one and I'll see you next time.